Oh, hi. I'm Nick Paganella, a veteran's corner. I videotaped this uh, uh, event and I uh, hope that you find it interesting, educational, and historical, as I did. What it is. Hi, Michael Manetti. How are you? I'm good. This is Michael Manetti in, uh, from the state of Maine. And uh, what town do you live in, Mike? Well, I live in Freeport. Oh, in Freeport, Maine? And uh, you're down here at the... Uh, National Park here in Concord? Um, well, actually, this is Lincoln, where we are right now. That's right. You're, that is exactly right. And I tell you, I made that mistake. I'll tell you about it later on when we start talking. Mm -hmm. uh, what grade are you in, Mike? Well, I'm going into fifth grade. Uh-huh. And uh, what school is that? Well, I'm going to Wayne Fleet in um, Portland, Maine. It's a good uh -huh. school. Yeah, you like it, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, how did you get interested in the uh, Revolutionary War or that type? Well, that's kind of hard to tell um, because I don't really remember. It goes back a while. But when I was seven or eight, my mom took me to this fort because um, I was into, like, ships and the Constitution and the War of 1812. So she took me to this French and Indian War fort that also had some history with Benedict Arnold going up through Maine to Canada. Wow. The fort's in Augusta. It's Fort Western. And... Um, so the lady showed me, she, our tour guide, um, this lady, it's very nice to us. I had a swim lesson. So she took us to all the exciting stuff. Um, it was very interesting. Um, that's really where I started to get um, interested. How long ago was that? A year ago? or uh, um, Three or four years ago. <laughs> so you were only about seven years old then. Um, more like ten. Well, you're 10 now. Right. Yeah, I mean, but you're around 6 or 7 when that happened. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, where did you buy all this, uh, get all this nice uniform here? Well, first of all, um, this isn't really a uniform. It's more just colonial, everyday clothing. So over this um, pretty much coat here, I have a waistcoat, and under the waistcoat, just have a shirt. Okay. So it's a shirt, and a waistcoat, mm -hmm. and, and then, then an overcoat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Because in colonial times, man in just a shirt and a waistcoat, not a real man. Um, well, but where I got it, James Townsend and son. Um, where? James Townsend and son. James Townsend and son, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are they, in Maine? Um, no, they're actually a company out in Indiana. Uh-huh. Um, and gun is pretty much a collection of an old cap gun. Um, a lock I took off a cap pistol. Uh -huh. um, Very good. And you put that cap pistol on this here? Um, no. What actually I did was I took the lock piece, which is this metal piece here, off of the cap pistol, put uh -huh. it on the rifle. Right. Um, and I spent a whole afternoon gluing and cutting and taping. Um, and the end result was this thing. Well, the end result, huh? Mm-hmm. Now, do you get all A's in school? They don't really give us grades at my school. Oh, what do they tell you? You're going to pass, and you're not going to pass. Right. It's oh, pretty I much. see. How many people in your class would you say? Um, five, ten, fifteen. 40? Fifteen. Mm -hmm. now, now the hat. Where did you get this nice hat? Well, actually, just down the road in Lexington, actually. Oh, really? Down in Lexington? Yep. Oh, it's a nice wool hat too. It's a little warm today, but mm. you're really in uniform. Mm -hmm. How about what do you call this here now? Do you know what you call this? Well, these are my cross belts, and here. On this side, I have a cartridge box oh. with a little leather, pretty much button. Oh, oh great. Oh, I see. And then there's cartridges in there. Is that, one, is that what a cartridge is? Yep. And these would, um, these have nothing in them. They're just for show. Oh, I see. But um, I'll show you the steps for loading and firing one of these things. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So first, you bring your gun to half cock safety position, and that was prepare to prime and load. Prepare to prime, prime and load. load. Yep. Prepare to prime and load. Yep. Then handle cartridge. Handle cartridge. You bring hand into your box, pull out a paper-wrapped cartridge, which is pretty much some gunpowder and then a lead musket ball. Take it, bite off the top, <laughs> spit it on the ground, and bring it up under your chin. Oh. Then prime. Pour the powder in the pan. Close pan. Close the pan. Okay. Bout. Was that stout? Bout. Oh, bout. You bring the gun around. You put the paper next to the barrel. 
charge cartridge. And you pour the powder into the barrel. Yep. And you put the cartridge on the ground. Oh. Go ahead. And then draw rammer. Well, is there a ball in there now? Um, yes. You put powder and ball down the barrel. And then oh, to the, make sure the, that it's seated. The ball, the ball is on the bottom and the powder's on top. And when you chip it, the powder goes down and the ball goes down. Right. And the oh. ball's on top. Okay. And these are smooth bore, which means if you smooth feel the bore, yeah. outside, it's pretty smooth on the barrel. Right. It's that smooth on smooth. the inside. It's smooth like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. So when you see the Major League Baseball players check a baseball, yeah. sort of how the baseball goes through the air, that's what the musket ball does. Oh. Now, when you see Major League Football, oh. Um, and they check the football through the air. Yeah, spirals. Right. That's um, your modern rifle bullet. Okay. So anyways, so I've poured my cartridge. Now, draw rammers. You pull out this wood. Um, most modern guns um, or modern colonial guns would have right. had a metal rammer on. Yeah. This one's just wood. Yeah. Ram cartridge. Wow. Ram it down the barrel. Yeah. Then pull it out. Slide it back into the receiver. You made all this receiver. You taped all this yourself? Yep, I actually glued it too. Then return rammer. Oh, okay. Then you bring the gun up the shoulder arms. Shoulder arms, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're ready to fire. Okay. All right, now. Now. Th three commands. Make ready! Bring the gun to full cock, which means when it's in safety position, when you fire, nothing happens, see? Now when it's full cock, full cock, present! Fire! Fire, bring it down, cock. Okay. And then you're ready to load again. Well, that is very, very interesting. I didn't know all those commands. I didn't know any of them. Well, you're pretty good at that. You studied this then. Yep. You really have a, a, a passion to really learn this uh, Thank you. Revolutionary period. Mm -hmm. Are there any other every other period in history that you're interested in? Well, the French and India War for one, and oh. um, War of 1812, pretty uh -huh. much from um, Jamestown to the Civil War. Oh, Jamestown was when he first started. Yep. I see. Well, they're having a uh, demonstration over there. You haven't seen it yet, have you? Um, no, but what they're going to be doing is they're showing the Manual of Arms. Oh, I see. Over there, yeah, I can see it all the way through the woods there, the stone wall. Well, they're going to do it again, and you can see it live. And uh, I, I, re I videotaped it, and I'd be mm -hmm. more than happy to turn around and send you a copy. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay, you think your mother would uh, be all right uh, that you could get a copy of this? Because she gave me permission to, for, for, for mm -hmm. me to talk to you on television. Yep. Okay, there's one more question I want to ask. Would you turn this way here? Mm -hmm. uh, what is this here? What's that there? Now, this is my haversack. It's pretty much just a little container for storing goodies. Oh, haversack, huh? And in here, I have my tin snuff box. A tin um, oh, that ball? Yep, this is what um, would have gone down the barrel if I had actually been firing. Wow. Okay. This is a 75 caliber British Brown Best ball. A British caliber, 75? Yep, this is 75 caliber. Um, wow. Pretty heavy. Yeah, I guess so. If that hits you, you'll know it. This side is flattened from where it's been fired. So um, this is, um, when it hit you, make a big hole. And these were, used to be made out of lead. So when you got hit, even if you were the smartest person in the world, um, you get hit. And if you survived, you'd actually get brain damage because lead would hurt your, um, it hurts your brain. Yeah, and it affects your bloodstream, too. Mm -hmm. And also, the other thing about these that you could make them really nasty is you could hammer a nail through them so that it would blow up your organs. Or you could carve an X into it and there'd be all these little pieces in your body. Um, so the pieces in your body, they just spread out you had almost no chance of survival. How about, uh, what else have you got in that bag, that, that box there? What's in that box? Is some coins or something? Yep. These are, um, this is the Spanish eight reel. Um, the coin is, was standard commerce, um, um, standard pay for Americans and their soldiers. There's, 
Um, and so, right up from when colonies were first founded, well into the 1840s, this was accepted currency. Well, how, why, why do you have them cut in pieces? Well, during the Revolution, currency was really hard to come by. Uh -huh. And now, you may have heard um, from pirate stuff, pieces of eight, pieces of eight, squawk, pieces of eight. Pieces of eight, scratch? Squawk. Oh, squawk. You know, from like, Polly wants a cracker. Oh, nice. Um, and piece they cut eight. these eight wheel in pieces because currency was so hard to come by. And this is a half piece. Um, a f orbit piece is right here. And a six bit piece. And um, I keep this in a snuff box and snuff what would originally go in there was finely ground tobacco. And you'd open the box, if, like you felt like you had a cold, instead of just blowing your nose, you'd open the box, take a little snuff, go, a chew. Oh, what's the purpose of that now? Um, it was, um, when you felt your nose get clogged, instead of using a tissue, um, you would just sneeze it out. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Um, I never thought of it that way. How do you learn about this? Did you read it? Yep. Oh. I mostly read this stuff. What else do you have in your bag there? Well, um, so I have my snuff box. Then I have this thing. It's pretty much just a cleaning rag that I use to um, clean out the outside of my gun um, when it gets dirty, because you'd fire these things, they get dirty. Um, from the flint making a spark, igniting gunpowder, the flint's right in that gunpowder. Um, and eventually your fl flint breaks from getting hit by an explosion so many times. But when you pull it out, again, it's just covered in black dirt and grime from the gunpowder. So is your frism. You want to keep the flint and the frism in good firing order so that when you fire, the flint will scrap off a spark. And the spark was a burning piece of metal. Um, and the burning piece of metal would fall into the gunpowder create a little explosion, and set off a main charge in the barrel, the gun. Um, that's how these things would fire. The other thing I've got in here, some interest, uh, um, is this thing. This is pretty much just something to make yourself look good if, um, for parades and stuff. It's pretty much like our modern neckties. Um, what you do is you fold this into a triangle, bring it under like this, and tie under your neck so that you have this big fluffy ruffle coming out. Soldiers didn't wear these. This is for my civilian interpretations. Um, so I just keep that in my haversack. The other thing of interest is a flint wallet I have. Now, what? a flint wallet? Yep. This is where you keep your spare flints. Um, Sometimes if I'm in like the middle of a reenactment, my flint breaks or something, um, instead of putting them in their case like the, I should, because um, I'll be like, whoa. That's what the th whole volley sounds like, because the guys would fire at once um, so that they could get the most lead in the air, because these things were only accurate to 70 yards. But I'll be like, in the middle of firing, click. I'll pull back my cock, and the flint will literally fall on the ground. Um, and so I'll pick up the pieces, because I still like to keep them. I'll just chuck them back in my haversack, open my wallet. If I have another piece of flint, just yank it out, stick it in the jaws. And what you do with the flint in the jaws to hold it in place um, is you put a piece of leather in there. And, um, or lead to hold the flint in place. But the flint wall wallet is something I like to have on hand. And the gun flints um, were almost as valuable as money. Because without those, the gun don't fire. And you're stuck with pretty much, if you had a bayonet, if you were lucky enough to have one, most colonial soldiers actually did not have bayonets. They, most colonial soldiers didn't even have uniforms. Um, even toward the end of the war. Those who did, the uniforms wore out really quickly. But 
If you lost the ramrod or you lost your flint, pretty much left with a 10, pound, 10 to 12 pound club or spear. A 10 or a 12 pound club or a spear? Yep, depending if you've got a um, French gun or a British gun. French guns weigh 10 pounds, British guns weigh 12. Okay. You've got a little brass chain there on your button there. What, what was that uh, right there, that brass chain right there? Oh, this this is my pocket watch chain. Um, it has a brass watch on the end uh -huh. um, that I used to tell time, because they didn't actually have wristwatches in colonial times. Um, they only had, um, not brass, um, they didn't have wristwatches till like, the 1860s or 70s. Um, and those were actually pretty much watches that you, it was a chain that you put on your wrist with a watch on it. Okay, now there's a little brush there too on the end of the chain, uh, there, right there, that brush. What is that? Uh, well, that's to... Uh, oh, this up. is a different chain. Um, the chain down here is the chain um, I was just talking about. This chain here, um, it actually attaches to a button on my coat here. Yes. Um, now, the little brush on the end is after firing a number of shots. Your touch hole, which was the little hole that sends the explosion in the pan into the barrel from, gets clogged. And so I have this little brush to brush out the powder in the barrel. Um, wait, sorry, not the barrel, the pan. So I brush the powder out of the pan, um, and after I brush out the powder from the pan, I can take this little um, pick and actually pick out that touch hole. Okay, just show, to get, me the, show me the pick in your hand. Um, just to get the rest of the gunpowder out of the barrel. Hold it, hold it right there. So, and, you, so you use that pick to uh, clean the touch hole. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the pick you would use to pick out the gunpowder in the touch hole. But if you got shot and you fell on this thing, this is the downside to having a pick. And that's why some soldiers actually bent them the hammer. Mine's made of iron, so I couldn't do that. But the British didn't do this, but the colonists did. They bend them so that if they fell wounded, they wouldn't land on the pick. I see. Um, actually, I have to be careful when I um, fake die, because when I do that, sometimes if my pick is pointed at me, oh! Um, well, you, you fake it when you die. You, you actually... Uh, uh, reenact uh, a battle, and you sometimes um, they get wounded. Well, I don't usually end up in the middle of the battle, but sometimes if I do, um, I get wounded. It's not good to have this thing on me, because sometimes, oof, stabs you. Um, but, you know, usually I figure out a way to keep it pointed away from me. It's one of the scenes where I go, <laughs> and um, have to fake wounded. Very, very, very exciting and educational, and mm -hmm. I learned a lot of things by listening to what you had to say today, Michael. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish you a lot of luck in your endeavors, and uh, I'm going to be sending you a DVD of this uh, interview. Mm -hmm. I want to thank your mother here, who mm -hmm. gave us permission to take this and put it on local television in Metro West, mm -hmm. Central Massachusetts. And uh, I also have some other DVDs that I'm going to send you that I've done that you might be interested in. You'll find mm -hmm. them very interesting. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Michael. Okay. Best of luck to you in the filming business. Best of luck to me in the filming business. Wow, you are exceptional. You know that? Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Well, we finished this uh, video, and uh, hope you found it enjoyable, historical, and entertaining. And uh, look forward to another Veterans Corner video that we will be producing in the future months. Goodbye for now.